Hey, what is up YouTube? Optic Ashes here bringing you another video. And today I'm going to be talking about the two maps that we currently see in the developer playlist, the remakes of Slab and Hotel, both Gears of War 3 maps, and why I believe they will be or could be good competitive maps. All right, so first up we have the overhead view of Slab and I'm going to go quickly go over some of the main points of why I think this will be a good competitive map. Now, um for right now, the, the map is played on King of the Hill and, and game times like that. It's more of a social thing. So this screenshot obviously has weapons on it, like ensigns here, shocks, boom, nades, or bolt talk, sorry, that uh, won't be in the, uh, you know, the escalation thing. But it does kind of give us an idea of where weapon spawns are and uh, how those will play out. So it looks like that each side will have a secondary weapon kind of placement because we have shot grenades there. Uh, dead center here and probably up here and possibly here we could have power weapons though it's not quite sure or not quite tellable because instance and Boltox can both go to the side weapon positions um so some of the reasons why i think this map could be a competitive map or at least a decent competitive map is uh first off the spawns uh the spawns on this map you can read my handwriting spawns uh, the spawns on this map right here and right here, they're fairly separated and they have kind of a good depth to them. So what I mean by good depth is the distance from, uh, you know, where people might actually stand to the exits is pretty fair. And what I mean by fair is the spawn shield would last you until you got into some form, like some form of cover, which makes it harder to be spawn trapped, uh, like is possible on some maps that we do not see in the competitive rotation. Uh, and if you think about the maps that we do see in the competitive rotation, there's at least some sort of cover that you can get into before uh, you your spawn shield runs out. Think of foundation. You have the fountain block or giant fan vent things uh, that are on each spawn. And reclaimed, you have like the little gas uh, station garage thing, and you have the little uh, wine cellar thing. So uh, every map kind of has that same kind of cover. And, and with these spawns, you have exits both ways. But you have you have a cover wall here. You have all of this. Uh, you on this side, it, it depends on where the other team sets up. But you could have this. You could have all of this. It it really depends on where the other team sets up. But you do have, from what I can tell in the King of the Hills, uh, a good amount of time for spawn shields to wear out um, or, or for time to get into cover before spawn shields wear out. So that's kind of the main uh, first point that I want to make is the spawn is really important for a competitive map. You don't want to be able to be spawn trapped. Uh, now, the other thing will that will be important is the hill placements. Um, so if they put this map has a lot of good spots that could be pretty good for hill placements. Uh, you could put a hill somewhere on like this side, right in this corner over here and then up here. So you have like two home hills. Uh, those do seem kind of close together. But my point is that there is a lot of room within this map. There's good center points for hills and then you could have side hills. Um, you could even have hills like in King of the Hill right here where there's hills in the courtyards and then have the center hill in the middle. It, it all just depends. It's close enough, like the hills are close enough distance wise that the action can kind of stay fast paced. Um, but there also is enough cover and distance to make the hills viable and make it still kind of difficult to spawn, I mean not to spawn trap, to, to get a three cap. So um, say the hills were in that original position that i drew let's put one right here one right here this is a little bit different but you have cover systems and you have kind of a fair balance there's no way to shoot home to home but there is a pathway to home to home and this could open up a lot of strategies it could open up a lot of different uh, ways that people move around the map and overall there's enough space to make it interesting Having the middle hill control can help pressure the home hill because I believe there's a line of sight right here, even if it's just a little bit. So just lots of angles that could be very interesting for an escalation game type. I remember watching it for Gears of War 3 in execution, and I wasn't a huge fan, but I think in this game type it could work fairly well. Now, I already talked about it, but I'm going to write weapons here um, just because we already pointed out the weapon spawns. That's really important. Uh, it looks like you have 
one, two, three, four different weapon placements on the map. Uh, which means that by round five, you could be replacing a weapon, which could add another dynamic to how Escalation plays out. I think it's kind of neat that, for example, on Foundation, a team could put a weapon down, and by round six, that rep weapon could be changed for one round. So uh, I like maps that, like, personally, I like maps like that. Um, I think it adds, like, another level of counterplay to it. You know, if team puts a boom shot here and you want to remove it, but then what do you put it with or replace it with because you have to put a power weapon? I think that is an interesting way to keep the game fast-paced. So, overall, I think these three points make this map uh, valuable towards our... So, overall, I think these three points make this map viable towards competitive esports escalation gameplay and i would like to see this actually played in escalation maybe in another map test tournament to see how it works out so the next map we're going to be talking about is hotel um and we're going to go over kind of the same point so first off we're going to talk about spawns uh in this map i agree that or i continue to agree that the spawns are fairly well balanced uh you have a decent amount of cover that you can get to before your spawn shield runs out um on both sides of the map so there, there's that kind of factor, and they are not too deep, which is good. They're not too far away from potential hill placements. So say you had hills here, here, and here, which seems very... This distance is very far, which would make three caps very difficult. But if you put it in the middle somewhere, it make, make it a little bit easier. It just kind of depends. In fact, I think right in the middle would be a little bit more interesting. And then for the other placements, have them somewhere like here, here, and here, maybe. Um, either way there, there's plenty of room on this map to kind of move around, so to speak. And there's plenty of room for, uh, angles and uh, strategic crossplay, having good setups, having a good line of this, I have, uh, sorry, having a good line of scrimmage. So, you know, tep- typically a map will break in half like that and you want to advance your control so that the line becomes like that and you have all this space. So if we see teams having a cool setup like that, uh, allowing them to maybe set up up here and in here and then here and here and I don't know, somebody else helping over here. Uh, You have that kind of ability to have good strategic play, good crosses, and uh, I think that would make it a very interesting escalation map. And I deleted my spawns thing, so we're going to rewrite that. Um, The next point that I want to make is that uh, I believe this map has good weapon placement. Now, I know I touched on this kind of first and then also third in the last map, but uh, let me write that down. It has a good balance to it. You have a power weapon spot over here. You have a power weapon spot in middle. You have so you have three power weapon spots, kind of similar to Foundation. If you think about Foundation, there's a power weapon spot over on B Hill. There's a power weapon spot in close mid, and there's a power weapon spot on Statue. And then you also have these kind of secondary weapon spots over here. So it could make for some interesting play where you have a majority power weapon map and um, force teams to be a little more fast paced play a little more hectically for some of those power weapons now remember keep in mind you can put incense down on power weapon spots uh which might take up one of those but still it would be pretty interesting to see this type of map where there's only four weapon spawns one two three four um only four weapon spawns like slab but three of them the majority the overwhelming majority being power weapon spawn so i would love to see this map in competitive play as well i think it'd be very interesting um and uh yeah that is that is what i've noticed so far looking at these two maps i want to know what your guys's opinions are so let me know in the comments down below what you think of these two maps because i don't know I, i i would like to see overall more maps being added to the uh actual the actual game competitive circuit because I feel like once you have like you keep it to seven maps which is what we're doing right now we just recently replaced uh, Forge with Diner so we do have a fresh face coming into the map cycle the issue with that is we got rid of a map which means we're keeping it to the same kind of stagnant seven maps there's no chance for expansion there's no chance for larger map pools being forced upon teams, which means teams can just keep focusing on the same seven map. Well, in theory, six maps, because you already all like always get to ban one map. So you really only have to focus on six maps. Um, It's not forcing teams to be more dynamic with their play. It's not forcing teams to be more adaptable. 
and it's really just kind of restricting esports. If we're not going to have multiple game types, which I'm fine with, I love Escalation as a game type, we need to have more maps. There needs to be a much larger esports map pool. And, and currently, the maps that are being produced, in my opinion, aren't cutting it. Uh, if I add the overhead map of some of the other maps, like Spire or Glory, I could point out these same kind of traits to you guys. And you could see, for example, on uh, Spire, the spawns are so deep that you can get spawn trapped and not be able to make it to cover before your spawn shield runs out. You can't even make it to your home hill before your spawn shield runs out. So that kind of that kind of thing bothers me about maps. I think they need to take a closer look at these. I know these are playing way in advance. So hopefully some of the future maps will have the criticism uh, taken into account that we've given for the current maps. Uh, but yeah, guys, let me know what you think in the comments down below. I really appreciate you guys watching and supporting the video. And make sure to leave a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe. And as always, I will see you all in the next one.